Okay, this is the last section we're going to look at in this chapter. It's really important. We're going to ask the question, how do you find a power series for a function? Uh, at this point, the only ones we know how to find power series for aren't those ones that we can obtain from the geometric power series formula, formula right? Uh, the sum, uh, remember the function 1 over 1 minus x is the sum uh, of, of all the x demands. I guess it's right here, actually. Remember, remember this one? Uh, if you have a function that can be written in this form, then you can find a power series for it, like we did in section 11.8. But in general, it, it's a hard question to ask. Uh, uh, how do you find power series for functions that aren't necessarily uh, in that form of the geometric power series? Well, let's ans answer. Let's ask this this question. Suppose a function has a power series. This would be power series and powers of x minus a, or you could say a power series at x equal a. Suppose it has a power series. What must these coefficients, c0, c1, c2, and so on, what must these coefficients equal? Because if we can find the coefficients, that's all we need to know. We can, we can write the power series for it. Well, it turns out, if you look at this care carefully, if, if, this is the, if this is the power series for this function, what is f of a? f of a, wouldn't all these be 0 except for this first term? So, so f of a would have to be c sub 0 has to be. And then so we're, we're going we're gonna to just con continue like this. If you take the derivative of this uh, power series, notice c0 c drops out and you get c1 plus 2c2x minus a and so on. Uh, this is what you would end up with if you, if you take the der derivative of this power series. Then what, what happens if you plug in a for x? They, these all drop out except this first one. The first one will always be the, what you end up with if you, if you want to compute the, the function at a. So f prime of a has to be c1. If you keep on going and take the second derivative, you end up um, taking the second derivative and you get this. Guess what f double prime of a has to be? It has to be this first term because all the other ones drop, drop out. So if f double prime of a is 2c2, then c2 would have to equal f double prime of a divided by 2 factorial. Anyway, you could continue on, and, and, and by, by doing it again, you take the third derivative of, of this power series function, and, and then look at the third derivative at a. These all drop out except this one. Notice when you take the, the derivative uh, of, of this term, you get 3 times 2 times c, c2. So the third derivative at a would have to be 6 c2, which we're going to notice is, is 3 factorial. So I should say 3, fa three factorial times c3. So three, c3 has to be third derivative at a over 3 factorial. So in general, if you continue on, you, you end up no noticing that the coefficient, c sub n, is always going to be the nth derivative at a over n factorial. And that, that's where we have this uh, important formula. It talks about what's called a Taylor series. If a, if a function has a power series rep representation at x equal a, then it must be this. This what it must what it must look look like. The coefficients uh, of of the terms are f of a, f prime of a over one factorial, f double prime of a over two factorial, and so on. Now, that would be the power series at x equal a. A special type of power series that we're going to use a lot. It's probably one of the. It's more. It's a little more simple than x equal a. If you look at x equals zero. It's the same exact thing, but instead of x minus a, you just have x to the n, x minus 0 to the n. And instead of the nth derivative at a, you have the nth derivative at 0. So th this would be the, the power series representation at x equals 0. It's called the Maclaurin series. So let, let, let's do that. Let, let's, let, let, let's find the Taylor series for these functions at the specific value. Now again, the Taylor series of this function at x equal a equals 0, that is the Maclaurin series, right? How do you find this 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 t Taylor series or this Maclaurin series? All you need to know is what f of zero is, f prime of zero, f double prime of zero, f triple prime, and so on. It turns out this particular function is kind of nice, isn't it? Isn't it true if the function is e to the x, then f of zero is one. The derivative function is e to the x, so the derivative of zero is one. Second derivative is e to the x, so the second derivative of zero is one. All these f sub n of zeros are all one. So if you just plug it in. From what we showed before, this turns out to be um, 1 plus x plus 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus 1 over 3 factorial x to the third and so on. 
if you write this in compact form, you get that e to the x is equal to this. Um, so what does that mean? Well, uh, furthermore, if you want to, I'm not going to do this, but you could find, you could use the ratio test for this. I'll have you do this as an extra exercise. If you use the ratio test, we did that last last time, right? If you do, if you use the ratio ratio test for this power series, you'll find that r equals infinity. And uh, a nice way to think of it is, what we're really doing here is we're we're saying that e to the x could be written as this infinite degree polynomial function. If you were to approximate the fun at, at zero, uh, if you were to um, um, just use the first term or the first two two terms, you would get the, you would get a linear function that approximate e to the x at zero. If you would use the first three terms, you'd get a quad quadratic function and so on. The more terms you use, the better the approximation function is. Try it. Try entering that on your TI. Try enter entering y, y1 equal e to the x, y2 equaling 1 plus x, y3 equal 1 plus x plus 1 over 2 factorial x squared and so on. And you'll actually see that, that, that these the higher the degree, these are called the Taylor polynomials, the higher the, the degree, the better it approximates e to the x. It's also called the um, um, partial sums, right? Let, let's let's do do some more. Anyway, so so this is the same exact deal, except now I'm I'm not gonna write the I'm not gonna um, form the power series at zero. I'm gonna form the power series at a equals one. And and why would you do this? Well, it it, it kind of depends. If you were trying to approximate the function to the x. If you were to, to, to form the power series close to this number, uh, if you were approximating it close to a equal one, you would form the power series here. This turns out to be a better approximation if you're close to one. Anyway, so how, how, would, you, how would you do this? Well, let's look at it. Um, you would take the derivatives like we did before, only we're not finding the derivative at, uh, we're not finding the derivative at um, zero, we're finding the derivative at one. So we have to find out what f of one is, f prime of one times x minus one, f double prime of 1 times x minus 1 squared and so on. Well f of 1 turns out to be e. The derivative is e to the x. f prime of 1 is e, believe it or not. f double prime is e to the x, so f double prime of 1 is e, so these all, all become e. So, so the, the Taylor polynomial, or I should say the Taylor series for e to the x at a equal 1 would be this. It could be written like, like this. You could factor the e out. Now, let me show you on the graphing cal calculator how, how this works. What I've done is I've, I don't know if you can see this, I've entered e to the x here, and then I've entered the first two two terms. The first two terms would be e and e times x minus one. If you think of that as t sub two, that would be the second degree Taylor polynomial approximation. The third uh, function, y sub three, is the sum of the first three. And if you graph this, you can actually kind of see this a little bit. E to, e to e to the x, you can see e to the x. If you look at the first degree function at x equal one, you get the the equation of the tangent line is what that is. But if you look at the at the at the at the, at the first three three terms, you get that quad, quadratic function, and that's a better uh, approximation for e to the x near x equal one. Now, if you were to continue on with this and look at the next term, which would be a fourth degree poly polynomial function, it would actually be a better approximation than. Um, I, I, sh I should say the first, it would be a third degree polynomial function. That would be a better approximation than what, what I have here. But you, but you, can you, can you, can you imagine that the, the, the Taylor polynomial is getting to be a better and better approximation for, for the function e to the x near x equal one. Anyway, it turns out I'll have you do this, but I didn't, I didn't show this. But the radius of conversion turns out to be infinity on this one too. So you, you can form the, the Taylor uh, series at any, any point. Uh, the Maclaurin series seems to be the easiest, it's not, not as messy, but uh, in theory you could, you could form the Taylor series at any, at any point you want. Let's keep going. So this one we have the, uh, we want to form the Maclaurin series at a equals zero. Why don't you hit the power, why don't you hit the pause button and, um, and, um, and do that. Well what you need to do is this, this, this is what the Maclaurin series says, right? You have to find f of zero plus f prime of zero over one factorial times x plus double, double prime of zero over two factorial x squared, so on. So, so you, you gotta find out what the derivatives at zero are. Okay, well this isn't too bad. F of zero is zero. When you take the derivative, you get cosine of x, so f prime of zero is one. Take the derivative again, you get negative sine of x, so f double prime of zero is zero. See, these are, every, every other one equals zero, doesn't it? 
Third derivative is negative cosine. Third derivative of zero is negative one. Fourth derivative is zero. And then they start to, to repeat. So what you end up with is this. You get zero plus one times x plus zero plus negative one times, uh, that should be, uh, here we are, negative one times x cubed over three factorial, which is six. This one would be zero. The next one would be uh, uh, positive one, actually. Next will be positive one times x to the fifth over five fact factorial. Uh, five factorial, is that 120? I think so, check me on that. Anyway, so, so th this, 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 is, this is what the, uh, the power series for sine of x lo looks, looks like at x equals zero. And you can, you, can, you can check me on this, I'm not gonna do this right now, but I believe the radius of, of uh, convergence is, is infinity. If you use the ratio test on this, you get infinity for the radius. Okay, we've got time for a couple more here, it looks like. Now, um, now that we have the power series for sine of x, you don't always have to resort back to the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the McLaurin or Taylor series. If, if you know these series, you can play around with them. All I have to do to find the power series for this now is plug in wherever there's an x, plug in 3x, right? And then I'm going to multiply by x squared. That, all that's going to do is bump up the x exponent a little bit. So that, that's what I did. I, I, I replace x in here with 3x, and I have an x squared outside. But before I do that, before I add the exponent, don't I have to break this up into, into 3 to the 2n plus 1 times x to the 2n plus 3? Because when you can add 2 to the second one, because the base is x, right? Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.